I'm Chef Yankel, and this is how to make three epic burgers using two pounds of our incredible grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. Let's get started. All right, for our prep, very basic, because classic means basic. Here we go. So a couple of nice lettuce leaves, and I'm using Boston bib lettuce, also known as butter lettuce, because it really just matches the size of the burger, and I want the burger to sit on a nice bed. And next up, we've got some beefsteak tomatoes, because I just like the word beefsteak. I'm looking for like just the right amount of thickness where you get a nice bite of tomato, but it's not overwhelming. So I'll start close to the end. Nice, even slices. That'll do it. Some red onion. Let's go with, again, slightly thinner than the tomatoes. We've got our buns ready, and I'm gonna give those a slice too. And we've got some dry-aged cheddar as well. Let's not forget tender belly bacon, because I can't think of a bacon cheeseburger without tender belly bacon as the bacon representation. For the patties, so we've got two pounds of this beautiful grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef right here. Just get that open. Now, one of the important things when you're pattying burgers is to not overwork the meat, but to get it pretty compact. And so what I'm gonna do is just get these two pounds of ground beef together, kind of lightly break them up, and then I'm gonna form balls. Start with a ball, and I'm going for between nine and 10 ounces, roughly. Get some of the air out of it, like so. And now, to form patties, so I'm using a little strip that I cut off of a cottage cheese container. And I'll basically put that down in the middle, press it down with my hand, and then close that around it. And it gives me a wall to press the meat against. It allows me to form a beautiful patty that's not going to turn into a ball on the grill. It's gonna stay in its beautiful patty form. Like so, and we'll do that two more times. That little toss down into your patty maker also helps a little bit of the air come out. It's very satisfying as well. And the plastic just helps me keep it from sticking to the cutting board when I'm pressing down. Three beautiful patties ready to go. Let's make that one a little bit more even. Those look great. I'm gonna toss my bacon in the oven. I'll see you outside of the grill. All right, let's get these burgers on the grill. So I've got my grill set up and I've got charcoal off to one side. That allows me to move the burgers off to a cool side once they've got a nice good sear on them so they don't overcook or burn. And I'm gonna season both sides right now. Here we go. Plenty of salt and pepper. These are hefty burgers and I'm only seasoning the outside. I'm gonna let all the flavor from the seasoning work its way in as they cook. All right, here we go. Onto the grill. On to the hot side. That is one of the most beautiful sounds in the world. While we let the burgers get a good sear going, we're gonna build our secret sauce, which obviously is not gonna be a secret anymore. Very simple, using ingredients that you probably have lying around, starting with ketchup and mayo, classic combination, and then of course I've got pickles, chopped pickles. Equal parts, and I'm using two kosher dill spears, just because they have a little bit of like sweet and sour tang to them. I'm adding a pinch of garlic powder. All right, a healthy pinch. A healthy splash of malt vinegar. And finally, a little bit of barbecue sauce. Basically all the flavors I associate with burgers are going into the sauce. And we're just gonna give that a stir. A pinch of salt and pepper. Time to give our burgers a quarter turn before I flip them and being very careful, one quarter turn. I don't want to disrupt that beautiful sear that's happening, but I don't want the burgers to have too much contact with the grill for too long. So quarter turn after about two and a half minutes. And we'll give them another minute or so and then flip them over. And by the way, we are topping this epic burger with the best bacon I have ever had. I'm gonna eat some of it right now. This is tender belly bacon. And if you haven't tried it, find some. It is fantastic. I happen to know some people who sell it. Wow. I grilled the bacon briefly, got it crispy, moved it off to the side of the grill and let it finish. It's a nice thick bacon. So I've got a visual cue when it comes time to flip the burger. 
and that's the way the edges start to round off because it's starting to crisp up on the other side. To me, that's a sign, time to flip. Oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, that's even better. Ah, that's the winner right there. They're gonna go two or three minutes, one more quarter turn, but in the meantime, I can actually go right on top with my bacon, and then when I do that quarter turn, we're gonna hit them with cheese. This way the bacon starts to warm up. One more minute, and we are gonna quarter turn them. In the meantime, I'm gonna let my bun start to toast on the cooler side of the grill, and we'll move them over to the hot area as soon as we take the burgers off to rest. For the buns, just to get them to crisp up a little faster, I give them a little bit of a brush with some whole butter right before I put them on. And as you can see, I'm going restaurant style for my preparation with my lettuce, tomato, and onion. I have them stacked, I have my cheese on top, I know where everything is, and I can put the whole thing together in no time at all. So I think we're ready for our next quarter turn. Let's top them with some cheese. You can see the onion has already started to go to work on the cheese. It's just gonna add even more flavor. Beautifully toasting buns. Oh, we are coming right up on a medium rare. Perfectly done. We're gonna go medium, so they're gonna finish on the cooler side of the grill. And by the way, feel free to cook a burger to whatever temperature you love or are most comfortable with. I prefer mine a nice medium, which means the final resting temperature is gonna be around 145 to 150. And that's just my personal preference. All right, let's move these burgers over to the cool side of the grill for our final quarter turn. Now, if you wanna speed up your cheese melting, you can throw the lid of the grill right on top, keep the vents open so you don't suffocate the fire. Give it about 30 seconds and you're gonna have beautifully melted cheese. Let's do that. So I've got my vent open. I've got my bottom vent open about halfway. That allows air to flow really nicely through. Close that up. And if you wanted to add a little bit of smoky flavor, you could throw some wood chips in the fire right now and you'd get a beautiful smoke all over everything. All right. While we let our cheese melt, we're going to put some sauce on our buns. Gosh darn, that don't look delicious. And we're going to obviously put sauce on both sides. Obviously. All right, let's take a look at our burgers. Oh, that doesn't get any better than that. Lettuce, tomato, onion goes right on my bun. And on top of that, we go burger time. Let's close these up. Who's hungry? I know everyone watching this, probably defrosting some ground beef right now. Remember, when it comes to cooking burgers, like steaks and like any other protein, letting them rest is crucial. Give it some time three or four minutes might be enough. You might be really hungry, dig right in. If you can let it rest seven or eight minutes for a burger that's 10 ounces or more, you're gonna really be in for a treat. I'm Chef Yankel. This is how to make epic bacon cheeseburgers. Go grill something.